Understanding how cancers develop, uh, starting from the very first cell of, that arrives in the skeleton, is absolutely fundamental. By understanding how these cells interact with their environment and how they're different from a normal growing tumour has opened up all these new opportunities to think differently about how we can target those cells and eradicate them and develop new treatments that ultimately can stop relapse and potentially cure some of these uh, difficult to treat cancers. My name is Peter Croucher. I am the director of the Cancer Plasticity and Dormancy Program here at the Garvin Institute. So my research is really focused on cancers that grow in the skeleton, uh, diseases such as multiple myeloma, which is one of the blood cancers, and cancers such as breast and prostate cancer that will spread to the skeleton from a primary tumour. And most recently we've been interested in how these cells can arrive in the skeleton uh, and enter a long-term dormant state. So our research is really focused on trying to find these cells, understand what controls them, understand what wakes them up and develop new therapies that stop that process from happening. For many individuals, we might be successful at treating the very primary disease, but for many patients, their disease will return. The skeleton is one of the most common sites for cancers to return. Once they return in the skeleton, they're notoriously difficult to treat, and many would argue they're uh, incurable at that particular point. I think we've made enormous progress in the last decade or so, and it really began with approaches to finding rare dormant cancer cells in the skeleton for the first time. And having been able to find them for the first time, we were then able to isolate them and study them. And what we've really learned that I think is particularly exciting is that these cells are different. They switch on a whole bunch of new genes that a normal growing tumour would not normally switch on. And that set of new genes gives us some exciting prospects of targeting those particular pathways to stop these uh, cells getting woken up and causing disease. Research is incredibly expensive. The, the funds that we receive uh, are used to support the research community, the researchers doing the work, but they also support the purchase of equipment and support approaches to actually working out all the genes that are controlling those cells as well as developing new therapies. The Box Rallies funds have been used in a whole range of ways, but probably two big examples are, are really to use this new intravital microscopy approach. And that really opened up the prospect then of uh, being able to isolate and study these cells and identify an approach that allows us to find these cells in patients and develop new understanding and new approaches to, to treatment. Alongside that, the funding has been used to actually identify a new molecule and that new molecule we now know is really important in controlling the development of skeletal disease in cancer and we've just launched a clinical trial to target a, that particular pathway to see if we can stop that from happening. So the funding we've received to date has been very much part of a much more ambitious program of research. It has really paved the way for bigger funding applications and collaborations that now exist not just across Garvin, but across Australia and internationally, and really trying to bring together a consortium of individuals from across the globe to really tackle some of these intractable problems of uh, cancer cell dormancy in the skeleton. We've made enormous progress over the last decades in developing new targeted treatments, and arguably we are very good at treating uh, some of these primary tumours. What we're not good at is treating the disease when it relapses. So for me, the future of cancer research is really trying to tackle some of these intractable problems like why cancers actually relapse and finding these rare cells that are the seeds of relapse. And if we can eradicate those, this provides this opportunity really to think about true cures for some of these diseases.